Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Herb Klotz. Uh, I am the, the current uh, Rotary Coordinator from Zone 32. Uh, Zone 32 and Zone 28 have been working together uh, on uh, this DEI initiative that you're going to hear about tonight. Uh, the team has been working very hard for, for months now, and uh, basically they want to share with you where they are and uh, and how hopefully they can help support your districts and clubs with their DEI efforts. So with that, I want to introduce Kate Sims, who is the chair of our Zone 28 and Zone 32 DEI committee. So Kate, and I will Thank start you. sharing the screen. Beautiful. Thank you very much, Herb, for uh, this opportunity, Herb, Herb you and Doug. Um, so good evening, fellow Rotarians, and thanks for joining us tonight. We're excited to introduce to you the Zone 2832, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. It will be referred to as DEI or DIE, depending if you're from Canada or United States, throughout this evening. Um, and um, we want to thank Valerie as well. Valerie, I think that you initiated this committee, uh, I think, a year two years ago. Uh, so we are thrilled to be here tonight. Uh, we've been able to meet and establish a wealth of resources for each of you and are committed to working alongside you to enhance the understanding of growth for a more diverse and inclusive Rotarian experience. At this time, I want to introduce our committee. Our committee members are going to actually be giving the presentation tonight. So I'd like to introduce Sue Davidson, District 7010. Earl Miller, District 7210, Clinton Beckford, who's not with us tonight, he is traveling, um, but you will see him, uh, District 6400, Cecily Smith, District 7230, Joe Small, District 7950, Rudy Habesh, who is also ill, he may be on, but he, he won't be speaking with us tonight. He's District 7080, and myself, I'm Kate Sims, and I'm from District 7890. Before we start, um, we would like to ask you to listen and put any questions in the chat box. I'll be monitoring the chat box as we move along, and we will have a Q&A at the conclusion of the presentation. We'll be also be sending out the slide deck as well as links to the resources that you're going to hear about tonight um, so that you can either start, start or continue your DEI journey. Um, at this time, I'm going to hand it off to Clinton Beckford, who Unfortunately, again, will not be with us tonight, but does have an important message, and he is videotaped. Hello, fellow Rotarians. My name is Clinton Beckford. I'm a charter member of one of Rotary's newest clubs, the Rotary Club of Windsor Wide. Wide means we are inclusive, diverse, and equitable. I am also a member of the DEI Committee for Zones 28 and 32. On behalf of the committee, I wanted to share a few thoughts with you about why equity, diversity, and inclusion is a fundamental Rotary imperative that we cannot ignore. The Rotary four-way test of the things we think, say, and do outlines the principles we should live and be governed by as Rotarians. This is a guiding light, or North Star, if you will. We must follow this if we are to achieve the highest ideas of Rotary. But we cannot achieve these ideas without embracing EDI, as we call it in Canada, or DEI, as it is referred to in the United States. Embracing EDI is an active process. It must be manifested in the things we do, in the way we do service, in the way we run our clubs, the way we elect our leaders, and the ways in which we recruit and retain members. In other words, it must permeate our entire organization. It has to be reflected in the very essence of who we are. This must be the Rotary of today and tomorrow, or we will be left behind. While it is incumbent on all of us to make our clubs diverse, equitable, and inclusive, the importance of leadership cannot be overstated. Tone and vision at the top 
is crucial in building an organizational culture and ethos with DEI at its core. It is critical that at all levels, club, district, and zone, our leaders are sending the message that EDI is a rotary ideal. To live up to this ideal, we must be bold, deliberate, intentional, and proactive. It is not enough for us to say that we are not racist. We are not sexist. We are not homophobic, etc. We must be anti-racist, anti-sexist, anti-homophobic. It is important to invite everyone to the dance. That's diversity. But that is not sufficient. We must then play music so that everyone has the opportunity to dance. DEI is not political correctness. It is not woke. It is right, which means that it is Rotary. The Rotary International Statement on DEI says, and I quote, At Rotary, we understand that cultivating a diverse, equitable, and inclusive culture is essential to realizing our vision of a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change, end of quote. The statement espouses the need to value and celebrate contributions from people of diverse backgrounds and recognizes that individuals from certain groups have historically experienced barriers to membership and participation in Rotary. Let us recognize that as individuals and clubs, we are at different stages of our DEI learning. That is okay. We are going to learn and grow together. Our mission should be that today we will be better than we were yesterday and that tomorrow we will be better than we are today. Thank you. So thank you to Quentin who couldn't be with us, but that it was his, our opening the why and the message. And now we'll move on to Sue, who's going to take us through our implementation process. Yes. Uh, thank you, Kate. And certainly thank you to Clinton in his absence for his very powerful remarks. He has clearly articulated why it is critical that we make DEI part of the fabric of our organization, but I think equally of humanity. It has to be part of our societies. And we recognize that districts, clubs, individuals are all in different places on this journey. It is not a one hit wonder. It is an ongoing process of learning and reflection. And the committee has developed um, an implementation guide to support clubs and districts to move forward. And I have to, um, we continually highlight that this is not a resort, a, a prescription. This is a resource to be taken and used to meet the needs of individual clubs or districts or committees and where they are at. We recognize we're all in different places and this has been set up to be modified or revised to meet individual needs. And it is a five part suggested um, implementation process, five component parts. Um, it, it is outlined, there is a progression, but again, to be used um, in the order that works for the particular um, demographic that is using this plan. So we recognize um, Brave Space, setting that place to have the conversations. Um, DEI Compass, which is a way of looking at our club as a reflection of our club, and also a health check to see where our clubs are at. A primer, which looks at our own individual biases and where our own individual reflections and thoughts. And then there's a slide deck that puts this together, again, to be used by clubs, by committees, by districts to help move forward on the journey. And so the first um, thing we're going to talk about is uh, Brave Space. There's no question that this can and will and may be a very difficult conversation. So setting the space to begin the conversation is imperative. And we have to come with an open heart and an open mind. And the spaces will look different. They'll feel different. They'll sound different. But the important thing is that we cultivate a positive, productive discussion and that we must be honest and authentic with ourselves and with each other. 
To be in the space, we must truly listen. And we are very, very good at finishing each other's sentences. And I think so often when we're listening, we're busy formulating, well, what am I going to say? What is my reaction? We have to stop and truly listen with respect and with honesty. There's going to be diversity of thought. That's the only way we're going to move forward. It's going to be difficult conversations, but that's how we learn, by listening, by synthesizing, and by taking it and seeing how can we, how can we take this? How can we make our clubs? How can we make our society a better place to be? Respectful engagement, I mean, that goes without saying, but also awareness and acceptance of consequences. And I think one of the most um, clear examples of this in our Rotary history, of course, is in the late 80s when women joined Rotary. There were consequences. A number of members, men, left Rotary. But I think we would all agree that our organization is much stronger, definitely much more diverse today because of that. And I will, uh, before I turn it over to Earl, just uh, talk about some of the other resources. I'm going to read a quote, and this is one that actually from our um, past director and DEI task force chair, Valerie Wafer. We all have visible and invisible diversity. And when you start to have those true, authentic conversations and really value how everybody shows up, that's how people feel like they really belong. And that is our goal, that inclusivity and that people belong. And I will now turn it over to Earl. Good evening. We want to start tonight with a brief explanation of diversity, equity, inclusion, so that we're all on the same page as we discuss Rotary DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Diversity represents all the ways people differ, race, sex, gender, age, sexual orientation, disability, socioeconomic status, religious beliefs, and more. Uh, here on the slide, you see the statement, diversity is simply the acknowledgement of different variations within value humanity. I think it's important that we know the important, that we recognize differences. I know quite often I've heard individuals say, I don't see any differences in individuals. We're all human beings. Uh, yes, we're all human beings. And, but it's not wrong to recognize differences. Differences don't necessarily have to be irreconcilable. Differences can also, if we take the time to understand the differences, we can learn and we can grow and we can build trust, we can build partnerships, we can build community through recognizing differences. Equity is not equality. And I believe we have a slide that shows the graphic we use this graphic often to explain the difference between equality and equity. On the left, you see three individuals at a ball game. They all have the same box. They're all standing at the same fence. They're all getting to see the game, but from different vantage points. That's equality. On the right, you see equity. Still at the fence, still at the game, but now, because the tallest individual shared his box with the shortest, they all have the same vantage point. Equity looks to distribute resources to correct the imbalance by creating more opportunities based on the needs of others. And then we look at inclusion. And we go back to the previous slide. Inclusion is in, intentionally creates an environment that is welcoming, supporting, respecting, and valuing the contributions of all. Inclusion is functional diversity in practice. Functional diversity as opposed to positional diversity. It's not just what we look like as a club or as an organization, but it's the engaging. It's realizing the true value of diversity as has been referenced before. There's a statement here on the slide. Uh, I actually use this and it's based on my experiences as a child walking into situations, institutions and social, uh, social situations uh, following 
the civil rights movement and the doors that were open as a result of the sacrifices that were made. And the statement simply says, just because the door is open doesn't mean you're welcome. And I think no matter our expression of diversity, we have probably at some time felt not welcomed, excluded. As Rotarians, we want to be intentional in creating a Rotary culture that represents the values of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And that really shouldn't be hard for us as we look at diversity, equity, inclusion through the lens of the four-way test. Next, I refer to it as DEI through the lens of the four-way test, uh, but in a sense it is Rotary when we compare diversity, equity, inclusion to the principles of the four-way test. Is it the truth? Diversity is our reality. Diversity is a current societal truth. Increasing ethnic and cultural diversity is the truth both now and even more significantly in the future. Along with greater ethnic and cultural diversity, we see generational diversity as well as changing societal roles and power dynamics based on gender. Diversity is the truth. Is it fair to all concerned? Equity is genuine concern. Whereas equity gives everyone the same, equality gives everyone the same thing. Equity gives individuals what they need to succeed. Equity reduces barriers in Rotary that enables individuals to want to strive for successful participation in the service of Rotary. By the way, equity is realized not by the detriment, or not at the detriment of some, but because of the benevolence to others. Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Inclusion fosters friendship. Inclusion enables us to learn about others outside our circles of comfort, whether cultural, socially, economically, religiously, or generationally. One of the greatest fears of DEI is that inclusion means the exclusion of the past and established present. True inclusion expands the table of Rotary to add seats and voices. And finally, will it be beneficial to all concerned? DEI should be viewed as a win-win. DEI equals growth. Hopefully we'll begin to see DEI as growth, the growth of each of us as persons, as humanitarians, and as Rotarians. The growth of our clubs as modeling a diverse movement of relevant service and desirable friendship. And the growth of Rotary's influence in our communities, nations, and the world, both now and for future generations. Next slide, please. DEI is a journey. And like any travel, there's a starting point and a destination. We suggest clubs beginning the Rotary DEI journey with the DEI Club Health Check resource. This simple, straightforward assessment helps Rotarians to assess and locate the starting point of their club's DEI development. Let's take a, a quick look at this checklist. As you can see, it requires just going down the list and Rotarians will simply evaluate their club concerning some of these statements. For example, our club is welcoming and accessible, racial, Ethnic and gender-based jokes are not tolerated at our club. Diversity and inclusion is one of my club's stated values and are priority areas. This is a very popular and useful tool uh, as we have experienced in my district's work. Uh, we encourage the consideration of this too. This is just one of many resources presently available, available from Rotary International. And now I'm going to return back to Susan to share another helpful tool 
the discussion primer. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Earl. Thank you, and, and next slide. Thank you, um, Herb. And yes, I mean, we've been talking about um, DEI as a journey. We are all at different places as, as we along the, the road of this journey. And everything starts with awareness. And a lot of that awareness is awareness of ourselves, understanding where we are at. And this um, primer really looks to almost a minds on um, type of opportunity to really look within ourselves, um, to do some of that deep reflecting. What does DEI mean to me? When I say the word diversity, what do I mean? What do I think? What comes into my mind's eye? Equity. Do I see equity the same as somebody else? Very good chance I don't. But what is my belief? What is my understanding of equity? And the same with inclusion. To be truly included, to have every voice valued, every voice heard, every voice having the same opportunity. What are my beliefs about that? How is it, what are my understandings? So this tool gives an opportunity to, for some of that reflection. It also helps us to start looking at our own biases and belief systems, and we all have them. We've been on this earth for a long time. Um, we've had different experiences and um, people around us, different upbringings, different schoolings. We have biases and it's getting in touch with those biases, understanding those biases and the ones we're conscious of, of course, but also those unconscious bias. And there are a couple of um, sort of tests in here and one is the Harvard test to have a look at and see what is it, what is deep down inside of me? that is making me see and view the world as I do. So this resource is really to challenge and reflect on our own understandings. Um, we can come together and share and talk about it, what we have learned and certainly in the past, um, there's, there's been some almost um, aha type moments in, in some of the conversations that follow. But it is difficult um, to look ourselves in the mirror and say, who am I? What are my biases? And it's, it's okay, we know that, it's to look at it and to move forward to a more inclusive rotary and a more inclusive humanity around us. Uh, next slide, please, Herb. And so the final part of the sort of five components of the um, implementation plan is a slide deck. And this slide deck encompasses a lot of what we've already talked about. And it's, that is developed as a framework or a resource for districts or clubs to use, certainly in its entirety or in part, depending on the situation, depending on where the club or the committee or the district is at. Um, it can be easily modified to suit the needs. And it does look at framing the why. Where's that compelling why that DEI has to be a part of the fabric of our organization? Starting the conversation. And we know they can be tough conversations, but how can we start those conversations? What is DEI? What are some common frames of reference? What are our biases? And how do we address our biases um, standing up, what is the call to action? What can we do as individuals, as Rotary Clubs, as districts, to start to make DEI a part of who we are? And there's also some other resources and, um, you know, being DEI champions and, and some thing, resources like that that are within the slide deck. But again, it can be used for longer presentations. Um, it's easily adaptable to the 20, 25 minutes that is typically um, the length of a presentation or a speaker at a, at a Rotary Club meeting. So this is one more resource to help us as we move forward along the journey of DEI. And at this point, I believe Cecily, you are stepping in for Rudy and you're going to be talking about some more resources that are available to us. But I guess I have one final comment as I'm sitting here looking outside and it's a beautiful evening. And I think it speaks to everyone on this call, your belief that you are here involved in a conversation about something as important as DEI. So I think that definitely speaks to the commitment and the passion of the people on, on or I'm gonna say around the table, but on this call for such an important, important part of our organization. So I thank you. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sue. Hi, I'm Cecily Smith and I wanna echo Sue and thank you all for being here and taking the time tonight. We really appreciate it. Um, sharing some of the information on how to get a hold of us. Um, I also just put the FBI, the uh, sorry, Facebook link. This is how to get a hold of us. There is a rotary 2832dei at gmail.com. You will get this in an email, so don't worry if you don't get all the information right now. Um, that's how to get a hold of us in addition to reaching us individually. 
there is also a Facebook page. One of the resources we're offering to everyone is a forum for conversation. The Rotary Zones 2832 DEI discussion group is here for you. We'll be sharing relevant content and events, posting resources, asking discussion questions. You are welcome to share your DEI events, ask questions, share ideas, successes, challenges, and more. Collaboration and community are only going to make us stronger. It's a closed group, meaning that you have to be approved to join and agree to follow the community rules. Um, some of them are posted here about being open to new ideas, challenging ideas and not people, but also things like be respectful and think before you post and no hate speech or bullying. But it really is open to all of you. Anyone in your districts and clubs at any level is welcome to join the conversation. We ask that everyone keeps the content relevant to DEI, so nobody posting the random rotary pancake fundraiser kind of things. But if you have a DEI event you want to invite us to, please post it. So again, you're going to get the link to join the page later this week, and I'll make sure it's posted in the chat here. Please join Facebook whenever you can. And the resources, um, next please, the resources, go beyond what Sue and Earl discussed earlier, things that can help our clubs. Um, again, this is our email, and there will probably be a Facebook down the road, and in about a month, there will be a list on the um, Zone website. So you're gonna find lots of ways to get in touch with us and the resources we're going to share. So stay tuned. Next, please. So again, the resources that are out there are things that can help our clubs but also help us as individuals in our everyday lives and how we can each make inclusion and equity a lasting change in our community. So a light bulb moment is defined as a moment of sudden realization, enlightenment, or inspiration. Different ideas and lessons are gonna resonate with different people. Different aspects of learning may be more helpful to some individuals or clubs than others. As Sue said, what diversity or equity might mean to you might be a little different than to somebody else and different lessons we might need to learn might be different for each other. So next please. There is a lot of official RI information that's out there learning and stories that are here to help. You'll get this link, you may have already been on it, but my Rotary has a homepage of learning and reference about diversity, equity and inclusion. It's got some really important stuff. And it's also helpful, next please, it's also helpful when you're talking to your clubs and districts and individuals because this information is coming from RI. It kind of has that at the top stamp of approval. Rotary's Guide for the Future for DEI. Rotary's Commitment Station, Commitment Statement, I apologize, for inclusion. The DEI Code of Conduct and how you can support DEI in your club and community. The resources are right there in my Rotary us. <clears throat> if you haven't been on it, the Rotary Learning Center courses are amazing, and they have a lot of courses that are out there in the DEI realm that can help us. I'm showing us a few examples, the DEI Inclusion Basics and Intermediate, Essentials of Understanding Conflict, Resiliency, Uncovering Unconscious Bias. And what's really helpful about these is that you can find something that maybe your club's not following or seeing as important, but it's important to you. It is something that you wanna learn about. And what the Rotary Learning Center courses offer is a safe space so that you and I can do some learning. I highlighted microaggressions. You may know what that means. You may have suffered from microaggressions you may inadvertently have committed some. If you're going, well, I don't really don't know what that is. Hey, here's a chance that you can learn and grow and take this course. So a lot of this information from our rides to help clubs and districts, but it's also to help us as individuals learn a little bit. Everyday experiences from everyday Rotary and ro Rotary actors are really helpful. The Rotary Voices <clears throat> blog, we will share links has their stories about how they've built inclusion in their clubs and how they've 
collaborated with their community and helped their community because of the inclusion. If you haven't met him or heard a session with him, the Bowtie Convo series with Dr. Todd Jenkins is so helpful because it makes these conversations relatable. You'll get some links on these, these webinars if you haven't been to them in the past. They're recorded and out there, as well as the um, Rotary Accountability and Inclusion series. I'm showing an example, the power of connection with diverse communities. These are all out there for you and your clubs to watch and discuss. And again, you're gonna get the follow-up links, but this is also wonderful meeting, meeting content. Watch a webinar or take a class before a meeting or even during a meeting and then discuss it together. Um, so we can learn and grow and you can also have this built-in content for your meetings. So thank you guys very much. And I'm going to pass the baton on to Joe. I'm Joe Small. I'm a member of uh, District 7950. I'm a member of the Rotary Club of Born Sandwich in Massachusetts. I am a second generation Rotarian and a member of the DEI committee for Zone 2832. I'm going to share with you our vision for implementing quarterly conversations for the benefit of our zones. These are conversations that would be facilitated on Zoom. They would not be recorded unless we have a guest speaker. And with the permission of that guest speaker, that portion of which would be recorded. What is most important is that within the context of these conversations, and the feeling is based on our experience and our vision, these should be quarterly, not monthly, not weekly, so as to allow for feedback from our zones, from our districts, from our clubs about what topics they want to discuss within the context of these conversations. A continuous feedback loop so that we'll hear back from the clubs as to the effectiveness of these quarterly conversations, what improvements need to be made, and more importantly, what topics we should be covering. And it has to be within the context of a safe space. I've always felt that if you're unsure as to the topic of discussion, if you're unsure as to the tone and tenor of that discussion, at least for me personally, if I apply the four-way test and if it can stand up, then I know I'm on solid footing. One of the key areas that we want to make sure of that we cover within these quarterly conversations, and we do anticipate some of these conversations will be courageous type of conversations, perhaps even difficult conversations, especially when we need to address in the area of code of conduct. I have personally seen examples where some of our Rotarians have stepped outside of their comfort zone to address a microaggression that they may have experienced from a fellow Rotarian. How do we facilitate that kind of a conversation in a very frank, meaningful, respectful way to give each party an opportunity to clear the air? The length of these conversations we're suggesting to be no more than 45 minutes in length. They can be in the context of a lunch and learn. You'll see from this example um, how we want to cover some sample topics, creating safe space, using the DEI compass, how to facilitate health check assessments, models of successful implementations, courageous conversations. Who would receive the invitations in which to participate in these quarterly conversations? We suggest that they be our district governors, our AGs, our club presidents, and members of the DEI committees within the respective clubs themselves. That's a good starting point. And if we find that there are more that want to get involved, then all the better. But right now, I feel, we feel, these are the key stakeholders, if you will, that should become part of these first early stages of these quarterly conversations. That concludes my remarks, and I'd like to now turn it over to Kate, who will discuss the pilot program. Thanks, Joe. So our ask, um, we're looking for clubs who are either just starting, 
thinking of starting or having difficulty starting to be part of a pilot program. What is the pilot program? It's designed to provide mentoring, uh, resources, guidance to club presidents, membership, and DEI chairs. We want to ensure that each of you, um, that we are here for resources and guidance, and that this is your destiny for your clubs and districts. We'll assist you with the development of your program wherever you're, you need assistance, so that you have the tools you need to have a successful, diverse, equitable, and inclusive club. We'll assist you in the delivery of the five-step process or wherever your needs are, making this an integral, personal, and personal to your club by providing a train-the-trainer program. It's important that we believe that this is the district and the club president's role. If we were to come in and do it, we, we leave. And so, um, you know, you presenting and you embedding this in your club is really the only way to effectively make change. If you're interested in becoming a pilot program, please either leave your information in the chat box, send a note to the Gmail address, or reach out to one of the committee members. At this time, that is the conclusion of our presentation, and we'd love to open it up to question and answers. I didn't see any questions questions in the chat box, other than there was a couple of comments, comments about removing the fence for the equity, uh, for the uh, uh, equity slide. Any questions? If there are any questions, just raise your hand. Okay, Valerie, start us off. Thank you. Well, I know everybody's shy that these question and answer periods always take a minute to start off. I just want to thank you for inviting me to be with you today and tell you how extremely proud I am of not only the fact that there's almost 80 people on this call, your commitment to this conversation and the work that you're doing in your clubs and districts. And I want to give a huge shout out to this committee for the amount of work they have accomplished and the fact that they're going to support you in this journey and offer you the resources um, you know, from the Rotary International uh, standpoint, you have described it really, really well. We are here to provide that leadership and the tools to support you in this journey. And so I'm really glad that you're embracing all of them. If I can take the time to make one announcement that I'm super excited about, DEI will no longer be considered a project of Rotary. And in a recent board decision, I made a presentation to both the trustees and the RI board and as of July 1, the DEI task force will now be the Rotary International Joint DEI Advisory Council. So it will be permanently embedded in everything that we do, and we will be there to advise the board, uh, support our members, and to also liaise with all of our standing committees of Rotary International to make sure that everything that we do is looked at through this DEI lens. So, it's very important. Actually, I'll just also say that over 40%, almost 50% of our uh, districts around the world have uh, named a DEI chair. So I want to congratulate all of you for naming a chair, for starting these committees, and we hope to engage with you and bring together and share best practices and resources. Um, that's something that's on the Advisory Council's agenda. Um, so if you haven't named a chair, please do and know that very soon we'll be engaging to share best practices and hear from you about what's happening in our clubs and districts because it's not a top-down effort. You've probably all heard me say this before. You're the ones who are going to change the culture in our organization. So thank you for everything you do. Now, I'm sure everyone has questions and I'll just be quiet. <laughs> thank you. Hi. Hi, Herb. Um, nice to see you, Valerie. Uh, Peggy Belanger from District 7780. Um, I understand that all of this material will be shared. Um, it will be shared with whom and a time frame. I can definitely see our, our committee um, uh, re reviewing this recording and start spearheading some of this and making a decision about you know piloting. So uh, that's sure. my question. Peggy, um, uh, my intent is to get um, a note out tomorrow. By the end of the week, we'll have a list of all of the resources, the links, the Gmail, Facebook, so that we can uh, make it open and interactive right away. We'll mm -hmm. send not only this presentation, but we'll send the slide deck as well. Uh, the slide deck is, again, pick and choose as you would like. 
Yeah. There's a lot of resources in the slide deck. I think you've seen it before. And um, people are more than welcome to take what they want, modify, and use as needed. I'm anticipating. By the end of the week. Very good. I'm anticipating getting this because uh, kudos to all of you on this committee. Um, you know, I've been around for a while and um, um, the resources and the support that you're offering are just um, amazing. So thank you. And it's just so clear. This is what you mm -hmm. do. This is what you do, you know, and um, for some of us, that's what we need. So, Excellent. You're welcome, Peg. So, so, so Peggy, the other comment I would make is we're going to distribute this as widely as we can, okay, based on who we have information. So obviously we'll send it to the district governor line. We'll send it to all the district membership chairs. If we have the names of the DEI chairs and districts, we'll forward it to them as well. But then it's going to be up to you to forward it more broadly. Um, I already planned to. So thank you. Yes, I, I couldn't agree right. more. Just so that was clear. Uh, Ardeth, you have a question. You're on mute. Thanks, Herb. Um, thanks very much to the 2832 committee. This is fantastic. I just have a question, and that is um, when we've had an opportunity to uh, look at the information that we receive, and Kate, for you too, um, will we have an opportunity on a, I don't know, I don't want to say a club to club basis, but some of us have started down the road and have reached a certain point um, in our district. We've done a DEI member survey uh, followed by um, an action plan and 15 recommendations. And we've now formed a consulting agency within the district and we're taking it um, out to our individual clubs. But I would love to know what some, you know, some of the other clubs whose members are here or DEI chairs are here, um, what their experience is and has been, and, and we may be able to speak to one another about what's worked and what hasn't and those kinds of things. Maybe the, fa I, maybe the Facebook group is the place to do yeah. that. It, that's, it, can I jump in for that one, Kate? This is Cecily. Sure. Um, the Facebook group is definitely a place where everyone can feel free to reach out and see how are everyone's doing? Who else has had this experience? We're trying X. Did it work for you guys? Um, but we're also looking at a possibility for the qu a quarterly conversation being a here's where we are, who's doing what kind of conversation and pulling maybe three districts who are already doing this successfully to share their stories a little bit. So almost like a mini panel conversation that then involves into a, a group I hear from groups like, you know, what you're doing almost like a consulting agency. That is a very cool idea. So that's one of the quarterly conversations we're thinking of. Uh, thanks, Cecily. That idea um, comes from Peter Rofe, who's also on this call and is our um, district trainer and one of our incoming AGs. So it's, um, it, we're still going on this and that sounds fabulous, both the Facebook group and the quarterly conversations I think will be excellent. Yeah, thanks, Ardeth. I think the intent is, right, to get everybody more comfortable to start talking to each other and sharing our experiences and sharing what's working, what's not, right? As, you know, Earl and, you know, Joe and several others said about that courageous conversation, right, in that safe space. Yeah. Um, and that's what we're hoping to provide to everyone is that safe space by, you know, um, providing that email so someone can, you know, ask that question that they're not comfortable asking you know, on a, on a Zoom call like this tonight, or Facebook. Um, but I think as, as Cecily noted as well, the importance of our quarterly, um, our quarterly meetings is going to be engagement, inclusivity. It's not about us speaking or giving a presentation, it's rather conversation. And that's to help us, uh, you know, help everyone along. So uh, we would also ask, uh, I didn't do this in my ask, and thanks for bringing it up, Ardeth, if anyone has any ideas for a quarterly meeting suggestion, like Ardeth just did, we would love to hear it. Um, we can put that on the list of what to do. So thank you, Ardeth. Hey, thank you. Uh, Russ, I see you have your hand up. Yes, thanks, thanks, Herb. Um, uh, you mentioned that you were gonna send this out, not to just us, but also our uh, 
DEI chairs for our districts. Are you able to look at next year? We don't have one for this year, but I've appointed one for next year. Um, will you be able to see those on the RI through RI? I, they're listed in RI, but or do I need to send you the DEI point, chair? Doug, I think that's a question. Yeah, for so send that to me, Russ. Okay, Doug, no problem. Yep. Thanks. Yeah. Excellent. Any, Any other, other questions? questions. So it looks like in the chat, we have 11 people who joined the Facebook group already. All right, we have Denise. Denise has a question. Well, it's, it's kind of a question. It's also honestly a little bit of a shameless plug. So I have a question about uh, the information that's going to be shared. Are we free? And I'm guessing the answer is going to be yes, to kind of chunk it up and, and take it apart and customize it. That's perfect. That's exactly what I'm hoping we can do. But also, I just want to say, if anyone is going to Melbourne and is interested in DEI, we have a Zone 2832 panel that is presenting on accessibility and inclusion on the Wednesday um, featuring Mark Wafer and Peter Tong and myself. Uh, so if anybody is there and is interested, please join us. Excellent. Denise, can you put that in the chat by any chance? I can. Awesome. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. And that's the information we're looking for, right? That's a great Facebook welcome, right? Um, to share these things so that people can join and, and hear what you're doing, what's going on, so people can utilize uh, all resources from each and every one of us. Thank you, Denise. Okay. And and are there any final questions? Or I'm going to just hand this over to Don to close. So. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Herb. So uh, the first thing I want to say is a big wow. Uh, a big thank you to uh, you folks who have put all this stuff together. Um, as, as you were going through it, I was thinking about... Uh, I was thinking about you, Valerie, and conversations you and I have had over the last number of months and thinking about early versions of this that I saw and the excitement I felt uh, when I saw how you were taking it to the level where people could wrap their hands around it uh, in their own club, in their own situation. So I just think it's fabulous. So a big thank you to uh, Kate and Sue and everybody else for the work that you've done. But really, I really, really want to thank everybody else who's decided to join this conversation. Uh, I don't know all of you, but I know many of you. And I've got to tell you that you're a pretty awesome bunch of people and the, the fact that you're here and those of you that I know, and I'm assuming it's the same with the rest of you, uh, you take this stuff seriously. And I think we're gonna make things really critically important happen over the ne next number of years. So thanks to the team and thanks to everybody else for joining us. Good work. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Oh, if you have yes. one minute that I would like to say for the next quarterly meeting something, I am from District uh, 6380. I am the co-founder and co-chair of the District DIJ uh, committee. And uh, I think our biggest issue at this moment, I'm saying for our district and for our um, club, that how we can make our circle bigger. I see all those people, um, over 70 people, 74 people that have a passion in DEI, but how we can make um, some other people who are in the middle, not like against DEI, but somewhere that out there, how we can make our circle bigger and bigger. I think that's what our aim is for our district. And I'm suggesting for our first or second or third quarterly meeting, um, to that topic. How can we get bigger? That's road. great. Yeah, that's a great one, right? Mm -hmm. And it is that I uh, appreciate you bringing that up because I think that that would create a really dynamic conversation, yeah. um, right? So As much. I think 
yeah for everyone it's it was a lovely wonderful meeting thank you you're quite welcome thank you thank you for joining us and thanks for the suggestion crystal i think crystal has a question um actually i have a comment um to answer the question or the comment that was just made i think the first thing that we can do is to start sharing the information and i think by sharing the information and educating people along the way, um, people will become authentically engaged and interested in diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we want um, the people that we're trying to engage, um, we want them to be equipped with the right information and we want them to have a genuine interest. So I think if we keep those points um, in mind along the way, I think it will happen quite naturally. And I, I'd leave a final thought as we as we close out tonight. If anyone is interested in joining the DEI um, committee, um, please uh, you know please go ahead and use the email, and or go ahead and directly contact me, KL. I can put my um, I can put my email in KL Sims fifty nine at Gmail. Um, and we would love to have you join us. Um, we, we want to expand our committee as uh, we continue to grow. Uh, we know that all ideas are important and we'd like to hear what you have to say. Michael, you had a comment or a question? Uh, yeah, just, you just made me think, Kate, of the upcoming um, zone training in September and whether there's going to be a DEI block, whether that's a part of uh, membership or whatever, and any kind of advanced word you could give us about what that's going to focus on to try to generate some interest, uh, you know, getting people to that uh, would be helpful. So thanks. So, so, so Mike, the short answer to that is yes, there will. <laughs> um, and more to come. Thank you.